we we didn't have a lot, uh, but uh, we didn't know it. Uh, we had everything we needed. I learned early about sacrifice, uh, uh, and um, and by that I mean my dad had six boys, uh, but he was a blue collar worker and couldn't afford to send his kids to college. So we had to figure out a way to do that. And how he figured out the way to do it is he took a job as a groundskeeper for Boston University. And as a groundskeeper there, as an employee of that college, uh, of that university, uh, his children would get a free education based on the employee benefit of his employment there. And so he did that. But what he didn't realize was that three of his six sons would play in the, pro, in the NFL in pros. And uh, I was one of those three. And uh, I was fortunate to play. Uh, not, not only did I get a great education, did I learn about sacrifice from my dad putting his family, his boys ahead of uh, him, himself, uh, possibly could have uh, had a different job that gave, paid him more money, but he, he put his family ahead. So, but I got a great education. I had an opportunity to, uh, to uh, play professional football. Most people don't get an opportunity to do that. I, I will tell you how unique a situation it was for me. The first professional sporting event that I ever attended, I played in. And uh, so that's, that's uh, we, we just didn't, uh, you know, we didn't have the, the resources to go to professional games. We watched them on television. We followed it. But um, uh, the first one I went to, I, I played in. Um, I came to Kansas City in 1978 to play for the Chiefs. At first, I was uh, a little bit surprised. Uh, I, I was drafted by the San Diego Chargers, and, and uh, I started out, uh, out there. But the best thing that ever happened to me was to come to Kansas uh, and play for the Chiefs. And uh, I did that for nine years. After nine years, I decided that it was time for me to do something else. I wasn't, uh, uh, they, they weren't going to discard me as a player. They, I was a viable player still. They wanted me as part of the team, but I had an opportunity to open up my own business. And I opened up a, a chain of fast food restaurants. I did that for 25 years. And uh, I learned in that experience uh, what, it like, what it's like to employ people. And over the last uh, 25, 30 years, I've employed thousands of Kansans. I know what it's like to, to uh, not only employ folks, but to, to wonder whether or not we're going to have the income to, to pay the salaries of the people that we employ. Uh, I wonder whether or not uh, that we would have the customers coming in. All the things that go into uh, owning a business, I, I, um, I've experienced that. I've, I've done everything from help develop a restaurant uh, as far as choosing locations to uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning the restrooms. And, and so you, you have to do it all when, when you own a business and you understand too that you are the last person that gets paid if there's any money left over after everything, uh, all other obligations are taken care of. Uh, while I went through uh, that and operated my own business, I also uh, knew that it was important to stay plugged in. Uh, I told you about sacrifice from my dad. One thing I learned about from my mom was to those whom much is given, much is expected. Um, she always taught us that if you are blessed, and you are, if you live in this country, uh, if you get a chance to have a great education, if you have a chance to play professional football and own your own business, and if you have a chance to live in the great state of Kansas, you are blessed. And uh, she said, if, if that's what you are and you are, you better give back. And so I've been involved in many civic and community activities uh, since I came here to Kansas. Uh, former chairman of the Kansas Special Olympics. Uh, I did that for many years. I'm still on the honorary board. I'm still involved with the former players called the Ambassadors. We stay involved with, with functions all over uh, the, the Midwest uh, you know, on behalf of the Chiefs. Uh, and in speaking of that, that's how I really began to get my uh, contacts with uh, people in the, the western part of the state of Kansas. Um, for 25 years after I retired from the Chiefs, I organized a golf tournament in Goodland, Kansas for the benefit of Northwest Regional Medical Center. Uh, we've raised millions of dollars for them uh, over the last uh, quarter century. And uh, how we do it is we play golf against the, the, the former Broncos. And uh, the former Broncos and former Chiefs get to look at each other without having to peer through a face mask. And, uh, and uh, we have a lot of fun doing that. But so I've had, I've had a chance to do many of those things. I'm currently chairman of the Kansas Turnpike Authority. I'm currently uh, chairman of the Kansas Leadership Center. I've been chairman of Leadership Kansas. Uh, I've walked many of the scenic byways. 
Uh, but I'll leave it at that, Ken, and, and, and just to give you a little bit of idea of who I am and what, what I've been doing for the last uh, 20, 30 years. Okay, so all that preparation got you to where you are today. So mm -hmm. talk about the campaign trail. Uh, COVID-19 has really changed the dynamics, but you're still out there. We see a lot of things on social media. Uh, you're still meeting with a lot of folks and, and learning a lot of stories about uh, your fellow Kansans. Yeah, when, when, when I got involved with Leadership Kansas, the, 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 the most impactful thing about that organization, and Leadership Kansas is a, is a, a program to develop leaders for the state of Kansas uh, throughout the state, and it's sponsored by the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. The real, uh, I think, value of that organization and that program is connecting people in different parts of the state with other people in those parts of the state as well. So, for example, uh, you and I uh, would, would uh, get acquainted maybe through this program where we might not have uh, contact with each other, and we develop a relationship, and things that become important to Ken are now important to me because I respect our relationship. And those are, those are some of the things that really got me involved in politics. Uh, but it, back in, in January of uh, 2018, of 2019, I'm sorry, um, Pat Roberts had made his announcement that he wasn't gonna run again. And I did not think twice about uh, uh, the fact that who was gonna be his successor. I just didn't think that in those terms. But after he made his announcement, several people started calling me. And uh, they know who I am. They know my temperament. They know my authenticity. They know the fact that I'm t uh, I can be tough when I need to be and stand up for the things and, uh, that I need to stand up for. And they know I love the state of Kansas. And so they encouraged me to consider doing this. Uh, I took some, I'm a slow burner, so I did take some time to think about it, the ramifications. Uh, so there's been so many ramifications that I could not have even conceived and COVID-19 would be one of them. Who could even think of something like that in a campaign uh, uh, year? But uh, I, did, I did agree to, to do this. I did it because I believe the country is under attack. I think that uh, when we have uh, Democrats in Washington talking about socialism as an economic way forward for this country, uh, I believe the country is under attack. When I hear people in Washington, D.C. talking about open borders uh, at the expense of health uh, of our citizens, I think the country's under attack. When I see people uh, talking about, uh, and, and, and actually, when I look at the deficits that this country is now experiencing, before COVID-19, we were experiencing trillion dollar annual deficits. And most people don't even have a concept of what a trillion dollars is. That's $32,000 for every second, Ken, that you and I have been talking, our government spends more than they take in. And that's unsustainable. It's, uh, it, it's not right, it, it's, uh, it's, it's not fair to our next uh, generations because we are saddling them with this enormous debt that they are gonna have to deal with and all we're doing is kicking this can down the road and we need to solve this problem right now. We need to have the discipline to say, listen, there are things that are important that we need to make investments in. I, 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 I was down to my last $5,000 when I retired from football to, to build my business. So I understand that, that there are important things we have to make investments in, but we also have to make the tough decisions and say, we're not gonna spend where we can't afford to spend, and we're gonna spend what we have coming in. So anyway, I don't know, I, I, you got me on a soapbox there a little bit, and I, I apologize. Well, that's okay. Uh, let's get into a, a couple of uh, things that obviously we talked a lot of folks about, and that's the world of agriculture right now. Production agriculture has just taken one hit after another. The government has come in with some COVID relief packages. Uh, talk about what you're hearing from Kansas farmers and ranchers, what they want to see in their next senator, and, and how you can, uh, can help that process. Yeah, first of all, I want, I want to commend our, our men and women that are in the agricultural business, because I've learned pretty quick when I started, I mentioned earlier that I've gone out to Goodland, Kansas, and, and I've made a lot of relationships uh, built a lot of relationships with some good friends out there. Alan Townsend is one uh, in Goodland that uh, I am very, very fond of him and his wife, uh, Linda. And, and you know, they, they have imparted upon me very early on the fact that we have such a beautiful state and we also have people who are, um, they, they are the salt of the earth of this country. Uh, they are patriots, uh, especially 
when you look at what happened uh, in the last uh, year and a half with these tariffs that the president uh, has implemented on on the state on the uh, country of China, and um, the the it, it was very very painful for our our farmers and ranchers, and they understood that, but they were willing to experience and take the short term pain for long term gain of leveling the the, the playing field so that. Uh, uh, our trade agreements are equally balanced between our, those who are receiving our goods and those goods that we receive in this country. And so I consider them, first of all, to be uh, patriots. But I, I also would say this, that they do not want to be martyrs and they do not want to die on this hill. They, they want the, the field to be, that's, this is what I'm hearing, they want the field to be level and they want to work hard for and they want an equal shot and they just want to compete. And so that, that's the underlying uh, frame that I would like to uh, paint there. But now recently I've been out to uh, uh, Western Kansas and talking to a lot of ranchers. In fact, I, I talked to Steve Stratford this morning, who's been, I, I have uh, painted him as the William Wallace of the cattle industry. He's the brave heart of the cattle industry. He's speaking up where no one wanted to speak up before. They all felt this way, but he feels like the, the cattlemen are, are getting uh, the short end of the stick. Uh, they're working really hard. They're putting everything into their business and raising cattle, and they're not even make, breaking even uh, many times. Uh, and they're losing money, and and people are losing their farms. And and so he's speaking out on behalf of them. One of the things that he has imparted upon me is that um, we have a situation where there are packing houses. There's used to be eight to ten packing uh, uh, ownership companies in this country. There are now four. Three of those companies are foreign owned, which uh, if you think about uh, agriculture in this country, um, and, and especially the importance of that to the state like Kansas, you say, how can this be? We, we feed the, the world, not just the nation, we feed the world. This is a national security issue. And to allow foreign companies to, uh, to possibly control that, uh, that uh, food source, I think is a bad thing. I think we need to talk about that. And, and that's something that Steve is, is trying to impart on me too. There are many other things uh, that are going on there too. Uh, the checkoff, there's a cattle checkoff there that, uh, that uh, uh, where uh, every head of cattle, every head, there's a dollar almost like a tax uh, to, to go, uh, like a royalty or a tax that markets the, the, the industry of beef. And many times that money is going to uh, pay for lobbyists and pay for advertising of the packing. And so the benefits are going to others than the people who are paying that, uh, that uh, checkoff fee. Um, and then finally, um, and not finally, but another thing I would like to say, and I'll stop here, is the mandatory country of origin labeling. Uh, you know, you and I, um, when we go to the store, uh, whether we're buying a car, whether we're buying a carton of milk, whether we're buying a, 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 a home, we, we wanna know uh, who built this home. We wanna know where the products come from. And I think that's only a fair, uh, a fair question and assertion to have as it relates to our food source as well. And, and I think that's something that, there's a little bit of pushback on that. And I think it's a reasonable request what they're asking for. I think Americans will pay extra if they had to pay extra to make sure that we're talking about products that are uh, that are uh, produced in this country. I think that's one thing we're finding. There's a lot of discussion uh, in Washington, and of course, in the countryside, where a lot of this is starting on a lot of these issues. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about China and, and the tariffs, and uh, uh, we get even beyond agriculture. China and the U.S., the two biggest uh, uh, economies in the world, both are hurting right now. Uh, a lot of folks running for uh, political office this year are using China and saying uh, they'll be tough on China uh, to uh, try to uh, level this field again. Uh, where are you at with all this as far as only agriculture, but, but, but trade in general and, and the whole situation uh, with our relationship, that being the U.S. and China? Yeah, no. Uh you know, one, one of the benefits of Leadership Kansas, as I mentioned earlier, is building relationships with people that you wouldn't necessarily bump into or have a relationship with on an on a everyday basis. I think we need to maintain 
a line of communication with all of our allies and some of those who we deal with trading partners who may be adversaries. Uh, so we need to have that, that, uh, that dialogue. But, you know, in life, I've always said that, and, and this correlates whether you're playing professional football, it correlates whether you're uh, talking about politics, it correlates whether you're running your own business, you have to start off with the right attitude. Uh, you have to, you have to uh, do what you say you'll say that you'll say you, you will do. In other words, you have to have integrity. And then you have to treat other people the way you would want to be treated if you were in their position. I think we need to do that with our trading partners. We need to make sure that they understand this is the rules which we are playing under. And if you're not going to play by those rules, then we're going to take appropriate action. Now, what that action is, I don't know at this point. But it's doing what you say you will do and meaning it. And, and so that's, that's, how I, that's how I feel about that. Before we wrap up, just want to also give you an opportunity. Uh, other uh, issues, uh, in a sense, that you're talking at uh, about on the stump or that folks need to know about Dave Lindstrom and then plus also how folks can gather more information uh, about your campaign. Yeah, one of the things that I think it's important to, to know about me is, um, and I mentioned this briefly, but I want to I want to hone in on it. I, I ran uh, my own business for 25 years, and I had 125 employees at our greatest uh, number. We had four restaurants, and but our turnover uh, was 225 percent a year, 250 percent a year, which means that my wife was continually filling out W4, W2, W2 forms. She was filling those out all the time. We were constantly recruiting. We were constantly training. And we were constantly trying to retain the people who work for us. I want the folks in Kansas to know that I understand uh, in, in times when before this coronavirus, before all of this unemployment, uh, there are folks who I was running into um, and, and, and visiting with who said that we could do 50% more business if we just had the employees. We do need to secure our border. The point I'm making is we need to secure our border. We are a country of laws, but we, I don't believe that this country has a plan, a business plan. When I started my business, I went to the bank and I had to convince the bank to loan me the money uh, to build my business. Uh, and, and they wanted to know two things, what I was gonna use the money for and how I was gonna pay them back. I don't think we have a plan as it relates to immigration. We need to reform immigration pro a pro program in this country. It needs to be, we need people to come into this country, but it has to be legal and it has to be a plan that we're all adhering to. So I want the folks in, in, in Kansas to know that I believe strongly that we do have to secure our borders, but we have to have an immigration plan here because there are people in this country who are running business who are desperately looking for good help. Okay, Dave, again, if folks want to learn more about your campaign, give us the website, give us uh, uh, ways that they can uh, learn more information. Yeah, they, they can uh, go on our website is Lindstrom for Senate, L-I-N-D-S-T-R-O-M for F-O-R Senate.com. That's our website. And we have, uh, you can see where our policies are there, our priorities are there on many of the issues we've talked about and more. And then if you want, you can go visit us at Lindstrom for Senate uh, on Facebook as well. So either one of those two uh, websites and, and uh, send us an email, reach out to us, we will respond. Well, Dave, we appreciate time taking uh, uh, off the trail to uh, visit with us and uh, we will talk to you again. So appreciate it. Thank you, Ken. Good luck to you. God bless Kansas and God bless you all. Thanks. Dave Lindstrom has been our guest. Thanks for watching. I'm Ken Rogers.